Our native Splendor Garden is really starting to come alive and one of the most magnificent displays has been our native wisteria which has been blooming for about a week or so now. The native wisteria is called Wisteria macrostichia and it produces these beautiful chains of purple blue flowers just like the Asian counterparts and one of the differences is the native wisteria blooms slightly later and so we have less of a chance of the flowers being frozen off from a late spring freeze. So it's a more reliable bloomer for us. Now the flowers, you can see the, the ones that are closer up to the base of the stem open first and then they progress down and those at the tip open later. So we have this nice chain-like or cascading effect and being a vine we get that cascading effect coming down as the flowers hang off of, in this case, our bridge. Another difference between our native and exotic wisteria is that our native plants are a little bit better behaved. They grow to about 25 to 30 feet and they tend to not sucker as much as our Asian wisteria. I have another wonderful native perennial that I wanted to take a look at. This is Baptisia spherocarpa. It's also called false indigo or simply just Baptisia can be used as a common name. And the Baptisias are related to peas and you can certainly see the resemblance between the leaves and the flowers of our Baptisias and those of our garden and um, sweet peas. Now our Baptisia is not flowering and that's because this is a young plant. It was planted last season and Baptisias take a few years to establish themselves. But once they do, they'll have a magnificent floral display and really set a striking uh, specimen. They make a nice specimen in the garden. Now the yellow Baptisia, the flowers on it, nod downward rather than standing upward like other Baptisia species such as the blue Baptisia, which is uh, Baptisia australis. And this sets them apart a little bit as well as their beautiful golden yellow color. Now Baptisias are incredibly tough plants. Put them in the most difficult spot in your garden. As long as they get some sun, they will be quite happy. They do have a very long taproot, and this makes them very drought tolerant, but it also makes them uh, a bit susceptible to transplanting. They really don't transplant very well, and they don't divide well, which is okay because this is one of those rare garden gems. The Baptisia actually stay uh, where you put them, they don't spread around throughout your garden. It'll produce a nice about three foot tall clump and um, fill out very nicely. Now I mentioned our other species, the blue Baptisia, and that's Baptisia australis. This plant was named the 2010 Perennial Plant of the Year by the Perennial Plant Association. It is also native to the United States, to the eastern part of the country, and it has these beautiful deep uh, blue-violet flowers, and they're produced on racemes that could be 10 to 12 inches long. Now all the Baptisia will flower for about three to four weeks, so they put on a pretty good floral display for a perennial. Recently breeders have been working with uh, creating hybrids and, and new Baptisia cultivars for us. We have one of these in our rock garden, which is Twilight Prairie Blues, and it has a beautiful smoky blue flower that's really quite striking. Now the Baptisia are all very tolerant and hardy and adaptable, and they make a really nice specimen. They also work good to anchor the edge or back of a sunny border or a bed. They also work wonderfully in a cottage style garden. They attract a number of butterfly species and are relatively disease and insect free.